classifying stuff. For your Science 7 assignment on creating your first classification key, listen to and scroll through this quick tutorial and you should be well on your way. The first thing you have to do if you're going to create a classification key is know what your topic is. This is why we did the first part of the assignment, so that you get an idea of what you're interested in and what you want to research. Here are some examples on this page of types of things that would fit with the Science 7 curriculum. Now you have to have a question in mind. You want to know why it is that you're going to create a classification key and what it's going to do to help others out. Because a classification key ultimately has a purpose and that purpose is to help people identify things in nature. Could be that you want to help them find their favorite animal, choose a right style of bridge for a purpose that they have in mind, identify different environments or different types of plants. Once you've established what it's for, the next thing you have to do is collect your data. This is where the research comes in. I can help you at this point with websites and questions to ask Google, but ultimately what I want you to do is work away at the information that's going to be important for your classification key, answering your questions. Once you've found that data, you have to start mining that da data for unique characteristics. These are things that make different animals, different bridges, uh, different plants unique. Here's an example of two different bridges that are very, very similar but have some unique characteristics. Then you need to start classifying different organisms or different structures into their categories. For instance, the Pratt and the Howe bridge will fit under the truss category. Then again, maybe according to your system, they won't. Now you need to identify what makes each group similar or dissimilar to others. So bridges span thing. That's the biggest umbrella that you can fit every type of bridge under. From there, there's truss bridges, and they use triangular solid supports. Underneath the category of truss bridges, you get even more refined. The how bridge uses triangular solid supports with one central triangle. You need to create this hierarchy, this pyramid of thinking, for your topic. Once you've established that, you have to pull it into a map. This is called the dichotomous key. What a beautiful name. This shows questions that allows someone using the key to refine their thinking until they finally arrive at an answer. You notice there's important information. It's all contained together just like in a map. Give your key a title that people could look at very quickly and figure out why it is they're looking at it and why it is it would be useful to them. Here's an example of what the final published key for the finding your favorite fish might look like. Of course, in science, your information is no good unless someone else can use it to do something. So you need to share it and let others figure out if it's useful or not. Your marks are based not on whether or not everything's right, but on your willingness to put things out there. Like any good scientific presentation, any acknowledgements need to be made. These pictures were not pictures that I took, but pictures that I found on the internet. In the original presentation, you'll be able to click on each one of these pictures and see the original website that it came from. I don't take any credit for these pictures. However, they are very useful for illustrating my purposes. I encourage you now to go off and build your own classification key, and if you need to, to borrow and acknowledge pictures from other places. Make sure you have reuse license rights, which you can find in Google Advanced Search when you are using these pictures. We don't have to be as careful because we are in the education vocation and the laws are a little bit different and a little bit more flexible for us.